Hi, this is Stu Miniman here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage of HP Discover here in Las Vegas. I'm with Wikibon.org, giving wall-to-wall -wall coverage on all the trends, industry discussions, and infrastructure. And joining me today is Sar Galai from HP Networking, he's the CTO of the group. Sar, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Stu, great to be here. So, to your first time on theCUBE, I believe. I think so. Is I think what so. we really try to do here is try to find the, the smartest people we can find uh, and uh, really try to extract the signal from the noise. And there, there's a lot of interesting discussions going on in networking. Uh, kind of towards the top of the list on the buzz factor these days is, is software defined networks or SDN. Uh, you know, your executive Dave Donatelli this morning said HP is looking to transform the networking industry along with others and sees SDN and OpenFlow as one of those transformational technologies. So, um, as, as you and I were talking off camera, SDN is one of those things that most enterprise customers really don't really understand it yet and, and, and it's really kind of new. So. Can you set up for us a little bit? Is you know what is this trend and what are we looking at? Sure, no, that's a great question, and I think SDN is definitely one of these subjects that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, but different people have different understandings of what the SDN is, and so then they have different understanding of what it's going to do. And I think what I can do a bit is try to simplify it a bit in the way we look at it and how we sort of approach the issue. First of all, I think what's important to understand is you know what is SDN. And a lot of people think, oh, SDN must mean network virtualization. Uh, SDN must be this. SDN means you're doing everything in software. SDN. Yeah. Well, a, lot, a lot of people said we're going to do for networking what VMware did for yeah. servers, right? And so that, that's not it. Well, that's network virtualization, which is enabled by SDN. Okay. That's an application of an SDN. But let me sort of try to sort of set it up for you. So, look, the way we look at it as SDN is you got to have three things that three key elements are important for an SDN. The first element is that in an SDN is that you want to be able to uh, manipulate the forwarding of packets and apply policy, okay? That's straightforward enough. The next thing you want to do is be able to do that, the first element, uh, across a large scale of devices in a dynamic and coordinated fashion. And then the third key element is you want it to be programmable. So if you have all those three elements, now you have an SDN. Now why is that interesting? Now the reason it's interesting is because if you look at those factors, well, you know, switches are ready forward packets and, um, you know, apply policy. And you can have network management systems that coordinate or at least configure devices. But what you're missing is the ability to do unique things and that's where programmable comes in. So, you know, historically in the last 10 years or so, if uh, in a network you want to do something unique, some unique behavior related to the, the network ID or so forth, something beyond your standard ACL or your standard policy, you usually have to have a dedicated hardware to do that. Maybe you have an ADC, maybe you have a NAC box and so forth. And what SDN, the promise of SDN is no, now you can use your regular hardware to do this. Now initially you says, okay, well I need less hardware or I need less specialized hardware. But when you start to really think about it, now I have programmable access in a coordinated fashion across a multitude of capabilities uh, at the edge of my network. And now is that, therefore I can look at my network as a whole as opposed to just a bunch of separate elements. Now, once you have that capability and you can be programmable, I mean the programmable part is very important because if it's not programmable, then you can't really do anything exciting with it. Uh, so once you have that capability, then you say, okay, now what can I do with it? Network virtualization, which is what everyone's talking about and that's part of what we're doing with uh, our VAN uh, module, is a, a network virtualization solution that leverages the capabilities of SDN because in order to do network virtualization you need to have those capabilities. You need to impact how you forward packets in a unique fashion. You need to coordinate that across multiple devices, right? And it has to be programmable, i.e. you're doing certain packet forwarding or certain policy that isn't normally programmed within the switch. However, there's lots of other things you can do with SDNs as well. A lot of people, you know, we talk about the enterprise, um, you know, some of the earlier applications that people are doing with, with SDN is they're doing some unique uh, uh, policy kind of stuff, which I would call glorified NAC. But unlike maybe historical NAC, which kept everybody off the network, here they can program special rules so that when you get on your switch, you know, the switch looks at it and says, depending on what the device, I'll do different things, set up a different programming, and eventually um, I can get a device in the network. Now you can do all that on your switch with a controller without having a separate NAC device. Another interesting application for SDN uh, that we see from service providers, for example, is what we call sort of a cut-through behavior, where a lot of service providers, they're running a lot of their streaming, for example, their video streams, through all lots of firewalls and IPSs and so forth. And you know what they would like to do is once the stream gets going, they already know what the source is, they're already validated, they don't want to do it for the entire movie. So all they want is really to do a simple reroute once the stream gets going. 
That may seem trivial, but today if you want to do that, you know, there is no standardized programming interface at a high level primitive to do that. So you could use SDN for that. Yeah, so, so, so Sar, I wonder if we can just step back for a second. If we, we look at trends, you know, networking, it seems even kind of simple transitions take a while. You know, I, I think back, you know, 10 gigabit ethernet took almost a decade from when the standard was ratified to when most enterprises were rolling it out in more than just kind of, you know, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. certain environments. Uh, I think today, if I remember right, is actually IPv6 day. That's right, And That's right. Uh, it's here. I, I, it. I think it was 13 <laughs> years ago the first time I talked about IPv6, and you know, now it, 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 it's kind of real. So, you know, we're talking usually decades for, for this networking to take. So, you know, my, my question to you is, you know, SDN, is this, you know, because this is this is more than just a speed upgrade, and I mean, it's complicated to do the cabling and everything that goes into 10 gig, but SDN, you know, seems like, you know, it's a big ecosystem, very much a thought change, you know, or are we, you know, year one in a 10 year journey, or, you know, what, where do we think this goes? Well, I mean, you raise a very good point, and what I like to talk to the people about, you know, things, while well, people think there's a revolution going on, it's actually evolution, because there's installed base, nobody starts from zero, and people need to run their business. I think what actually drives the speed of innovation, or the speed of uh, the adoption of innovation, is need. And that's why you can see, for example, you know, while we were trying to push a gig from 10100 into the enterprise, maybe people didn't need it to do desktop, and so, you know, the vendors were pushing it, but what the, there wasn't a big need, however, 10 gig is going pretty fast now because there's this big need in the data center. So the same goes with SDN. I think some of the unique applications that people are doing can be applied on existing boxes. For example, boxes like ours that already export things like OpenFlow is, is one yeah. of the enablers for SDN. And so you're going to see people start to deploy applications that leverage SDN. One of the nice things of uh, things like OpenFlow is that it coexists with existing systems. You don't have to throw out what you have. You can run an overlay, you can have part of your system run an SDN and the rest of your system run your normal thing. This is what we call hybrid mode where your normal switch does what it wants and then you can program on top of that. I think we're going to start seeing that. There are already people doing that. Uh, but de definitely we're at the beginning of a long evolution. But I think, again, it's not one morning people are going to say, let's do that. Yeah. People are going to start utilizing the already universities and other people utilizing it where they need it for uh, 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 kind of NAC behavior. Yep. Some data centers are using it for network virtualization. Yep. Some service providers are experimenting on how to use it for cut through. And you're going to start seeing that, but what will probably be the prevalent use model in the next few years is a sort of hybrid environment, mm -hmm. where you're using some element of SDN to do something you couldn't do otherwise, but the rest of your network is running business as usual. No, so, so sorry, I, I love the discussion, it's always right. Is this evolution or revolution or somewhere in between? It's not a binary you know, function, some things are, are quite radical and we'll have new architectures, other things are, are kind of moving the needle. And you know, software and networking isn't new. I mean, I look at you know, Juniper and I look at Arista and you know, they've been doing software-based configurability. And uh, when I got to talk to you at in New York City earlier this year, um, I was pleasantly surprised to understand that HP has actually been, you know, working with OpenFlow for you know at least right. three years, and you, you're, all your switches are uh, OpenFlow enabled. Yeah. So can, can you tell us, you know, how, how long have you guys been on this journey, and uh, sure. you know, where, what's the checkpoint we're at? Well, the nice thing for us about OpenFlow is that uh, you know we actually, when when OpenFlow was started in Stanford about four or five years ago, uh, they needed somebody to partner with. Uh, to work on developing it, and you know they were working with HP Labs and HP, and so we partnered with them at it, and actually the first implementations of OpenFlow and hardware were on HP switches. And so we've really been on this OpenFlow journey uh, for over four years now. Uh, and so, and we've been experimenting that as, so, as universities have been experimenting with OpenFlow before people were talking about it and so forth. Uh, we've been in the middle of all that and seeing what works, what doesn't work, what gets better, and so on. So we've really been doing this for a very long time. I think the the the, the, the thing that's really interesting about you know SDNs relative. So the, I agree with you 100%. SDN is not a, the first time software is being used in networking. Networking is software by definition. Uh, but the fact that you have standardized interfaces like OpenFlow, the fact that we maybe define primitives on top of control planes that give you a standardized interface, that's really what gets people excited because when you get away from some of these proprietary things, you usually end up with a lot more innovation. And I think that's what's, what people are getting excited about. Okay, so, uh, you know, the second, dig a little deeper on your open flow. I've talked to a number of the, the, the industry watchers and people that you know, know HP really well, uh, and they like the leadership that HP's shown on open flow. And the question kind of universally is, you know, what about the controller? Are you guys going to be working with you know, the Nasiras of the world, or you know, can we expect to see something from HP sure. uh, on the controller space? So, first of all, I want to just uh, you know highlight, and I think we talked about this before, is that you know 
there is SDN. Open flow is not SDN. Open flow can be used for SDN. Yep. And as we talked about, our van right now it utilizes some versions of SDN. Some of it leverages open flow. Some of it leverages other things. Uh, so open flow is not the start and end of all SDN uh, architectures. Uh, I think the higher level point of your question is, uh, you know, where do we fit in terms of our SDN plans? And I think, you know, the high level, I would say, we intend to be heavily involved in the control plane. Okay. Whether that's a controller or other aspects, we, today we have parts of IMC that are in control plane. Um, so while as HP, uh, we historically are very good at partnering with people to give solutions to our customers, and we will keep that in terms of providing open interfaces. So if customers choose to do certain things with partners, we will be supportive of it. We definitely have some distinct plans on the control plane, uh, and you know, stay tuned as they say. Okay. One of the things I would highlight is that when you look at some of these problem domains, especially in a data center, a campus is very network centric, uh, but in the data center really when you think about this control, it's really controlling the fabric, and the fabric starts in the server, includes storage, and so when you talk about a control plane there, it's not just controlling the switches. And when we look at the problem, or we look, we look at solutions to the problem, we talk to customers, they're interested in, okay, how do I simplify my configuration, automate it, to roll out applications. They don't care about the network or the server or the storage. And so when we look at, it, at that, we look at it at a greater, at a wider uh, view than some people. And so when we come up with solutions in that area, you should expect that they would go beyond just the network. Okay, great. And when we look at SDN at, at a broader standpoint, is is VAN, is, is that HP's strategy? Or do we expect to see kind of a broader, you know, HP uh, you know, do we get an HP branded version of SDN? You know, Cisco often comes out with their marketing term uh, that they super glue with it, uh, and you know, sure. some people like to call SDN the, the Cisco killer, but you know, where, 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 where's HP going to fit in? Again, I think it comes back to, to me, SDN is a, is a method, and then there are implementations. VAN is an implementation of network virtualization using SDN concepts. Okay. Now that's a mouthful, yeah. but and you know, when we talk a lot about the control plane, you're going to see things from HP that are going to leverage SDN capabilities. Now, one of the things that's also important about SDN, and I think I want to talk to you briefly about it, there's sort of three different ways to consume sort of SDN capabilities, right? One model is, and that usually fits people who are doing their own thing, like let's say an Amazon or a Google or so forth, they want to, they might want the hardware from you, maybe they build their own hardware that supports OpenFlow, and then they want to build their own controller and their own applications and you know, they have thousands of programmers, they want to do their own thing, their own ecosystem. Then you have people like universities, maybe some larger customers, who would like to get um, the switches from us as well as the control plane with some high level primitives that they can then program and different things on. And then there's third level customers who would like the benefit of all these things but they don't actually want to program anything. Um, and so I think this is the areas that are, you know, so when you look at VAN, that's more on the left side of that. We have an application, it leverages SDN, it does network virtualization, it provides it all built in to the customers to use. They don't have to program and so forth. However, we're also working on solutions, uh, especially for the cloud kind of guys, where we'll give you a lot more programmability. One of the big things that's being discussed right now is, okay, what level of programmability do you want? They don't want to program packet forwarding, but they want to have primitives so they can come up with their own app network application. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, R really interesting uh, the way you put that out, because you know we talk for the enterprise, what do I need to do? And uh, I thought Ethan Banks for Packet Pushers just put out a recent article, and he said what we really need to do is have network administrators stop doing CLI. That's uh, right, and that's right. You know, service providers, they need to be able to program it, but when I look at the average enterprise data center, you know, we want it simple, you know. Yeah, they might need to change, the, you know, choose their profile, but you know, we're not going to take these guys off of CLI and then say, okay, go program all of these networks. Exactly. So, so for the enterprise market, you know, what's your advice to you know the network administrator? What did, what should they be doing with uh, kind of their education, and where do you see those jobs over the next you know five five plus years? Sure. Well, I, I think what you you hit it spot on in terms of CLI. I think you know people are going to be are still going to be doing a lot of logical activity, but it's going to be done at a higher level. And I think they should you know be aware of you know virtualization. They should be aware of automation things. There's all kinds of new tools for automation that are going to be leveraged that are, you know, they started off in the server world, but they're going to be leveraged in other places. And so they should really come up to speed in those concepts. Understand, you know, virtualization, understand automation mechanisms, understand some of these automation languages. Uh, because the, if you look at the cloud, and, and people in the cloud know this, but you know, the cloud is all about automation. 
you can't scale, you can't get any benefit of the cloud if you don't automate things to a level where you're really dealing with pools of resources and you're not you know, programming every resource on the hardware. And so people are going to be going, you know, if someone who's today maybe running a bunch of scripts is going to move on to a clinician where he's more defining the logical thing. So their knowledge of networking, their knowledge of uh, what's important is still going to be really, really important, but they'll be applying that knowledge, the tools that are operating at a much higher level. And so they, could, they, could st they should stay up to speed on all their knowledge in terms of how these things work, but in terms of how they're going to use it, they need to be up to speed on automation ideas and so forth. All right, so, so Sar, we really appreciate you coming in here, sharing your knowledge. Um, I was excited we got through the whole thing, and I don't think open really came up. I understand open and flexible is you know core to uh, the network standpoint. Uh, I, I kind of beat on sometimes we don't want to go on that buzzword too much, but um, you know early in open flow and SDN, look forward to watching this space. Uh, something we, we, we definitely think is a hot trend, and HP is you know, well positioned with its partner ecosystem to move there. So thank you for joining us on theCUBE. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with wikibon.org, and we will be right back after this brief break. <laughs>